Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters In this program we'll be looking at each of the chapters of the Qur'an You know it's really difficult sometimes to find some time in the day just to read the Qur'an let alone understand it And this is one of the struggles that we have we have competing tasks sometimes, like myself, you know, we have to wake up early to go and catch the train to get to work. And then by the time we come back, we're just really shattered, we're really tired. And we just want to spend some time with our family and just read something. And, and we just don't have enough time just to read the book of Allah. We don't have enough time just to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really trying to say to us. So in each of these episodes, we'll be looking at a chapter of the Qur'an. That's right. I just want 15 minutes of your time just to explain, just to explore together some of the aspects of the surahs of the Qur'an. So let us look at Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha is an incredible surah. Every single time I think about it, it just mesmerizes me. You know, subhanAllah, just the, the, the number of words which are in the surah and the number of benefits that you can get out of it is just phenomenal, it's just incredible. So why is it that this surah, this chapter of the Qur'an is the one chapter that in order for our prayer to be valid, we have to recite it? Why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mandated it, made it mandatory to be recited in every single prayer? Well, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned something phenomenal. He said that it is said that from the 104 scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, all of them can be summarized into three books. The Quran, the Torah and the Injil. And then he went further and he said that those three books could be summarized in the Qur'an. And the entire Qur'an, the entire Qur'an can be summarized in one chapter. And what chapter is it? That's right, you guessed it. It is Surah Al-Fatiha. So what does Al-Fatiha mean? Sometimes, you know, some people they say the translation of Al-Fatiha means the opening I think that it is better to translate it as the introduction. The introduction of the Qur'an, the summary of the Qur'an. Whenever you want to go to a bookstore and you want to see whether it's worth buying the book, or you come across an article of a newspaper and you're not sure whether to read the entire article or not, what do you do? Sometimes you read the blurb which is in the back of the book, and the paragraph from that blurb is taken from the introduction. If you really want to know what that book's about, you just read the introduction or the table of contents, really. And in the same way, this is what we do when we read articles. The opening paragraph is the summary of the entire article. And this is what Al-Fatiha does. Al-Fatiha is an introduction, a summary of the entire Qur'an. So, do you remember that statement that I mentioned by Ibn al-Qayyim where he said the entire message of all the scriptures is summarized in Surah Al-Fatiha? Well, there's one part of that quote that I missed out. And that is that he said that the entire 104 scriptures and the entire message of everything that he wants us to know is summarized in one verse. Yes one verse. Where is this verse? It's in Surah Al-Fatiha. So let's start with that verse. When, when we're trying to discuss the structure of a surah, we tend to talk about it from the beginning, the middle and the end. But for Surah Al-Fatiha, let's talk about it from its very heart. The heart of the surah. The heart of Surah Al-Fatiha is إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ And these are two amazing concepts. 
Subhanallah, you have on one side ibadah, which is worship, on the other side you have isti'ana, which means seeking help. So how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How is it that we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, the way that we do this is by reading the first three verses. So, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the, the bestower of mercy. Then we have Maliki Yawmuddin, the owner of the Day of Judgment. So the way that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by looking at these three verses, by reflecting upon His names, Allah, Rabb, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik. This is the way that we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His names. And furthermore, if we actually look at these verses, each of them ev evoke a particular emotion. Like, if, for instance, if you look at uh, uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alhamd, praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this praising and thanking comes out of love. And when someone says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, then the emotion that it evokes is that of hope. And then when someone hears Maliki Yawm din the owner of the Day of Judgment, then how does this make you feel? It makes you have fear. And this is the way that we worship Allah. We worship Him through love, through hope, and by fear. And then we have isti'ana, the second concept, which is seeking help, seeking aid and assistance from Allah. How do we do this? What is the greatest way that we can, you know, I don't know, how we can uh, uh, help, ask for help? When we're talking about Allah, the greatest way that we can ask for help from Allah is to make a dua. This is what we do. Whenever we're having problems and we're having some issues at home, we're having issues at work, whatever the case may be, what do we do at that point? We raise our hands to the skies, imploring Allah, asking, Oh Allah, Allah, help me through this problem. This is the way that we ask help from Allah. So, how do, what is the best way or the best way to make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the best du'a that we can make? You know, sometimes we have problems in our life. We have problems perhaps with our family, with our parents, with our children, with our colleagues, with our brothers and sisters, whatever the case may be. And we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us through those problems. But the greatest du'a that we can make, and just think about this, the greatest du'a that we can make is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. It is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a long life where we are only worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we, are, that we die as Muslims. This is the best dua that we can make. And the most common dua that we make from the Qur'an is اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ mustaqim, Guide us to the straight path. And we say this 17, or at least 17 or 32 times a day. But... The most common dua that the Prophet ﷺ made, according to his wife Umm Salama radiallahu anha, is Ya muqallib al qulub thabit qalbi ala dinik. O changer of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your deen. So, someone may ask, look, I am praying to Allah, I'm in the masjid, and I am asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me. Is that not guidance already? I mean, of course, you know, we, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that we are making this dua means that there is a level of guidance we've reached. But what we are asking is that that guidance continues until we die. That we are constantly always looking to be guided. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a, a, a discussion. He talks about three different types of people. The first one are those who he has favoured. The second one are those who he is angry with. And the third one are those who have gone astray. As for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with, they are people who have the knowledge but they don't act upon it. You know, how many times do we know something but we don't act upon it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses these people in the next chapter in Surah Al-Baqarah. And then we have people who are astray, they're, they're far away from the path. Why are they far away from the path? Because they do action, but it's not based upon knowledge. And how many people do we know? Maybe we do this as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about these people in Surah Ali Ibrahim, in the third chapter. So let us think about 
some of these concepts, the, these most very important concepts of Surah Al-Fatiha, of ibadah, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his aid and assistance. And the way that we seek aid and assistance, and the greatest form of this, is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the take home message from this is that we should uh, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. This is one of the most important key messages of Surah Al-Fatiha because we do not know how we are going to die. Maybe we'll die as Muslims, maybe we won't die as Muslims, but the point is, is we have to make the effort in order to, uh, to, make, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that He guides, guides us. Until the next episode where we will be discussing Surah Al-Baqarah and some of the very beautiful things about Surah Al-Baqarah is why is it called Al-Baqarah? Is it just because there's a story about the cow in that, in that, episode, in that chapter? Or is it something which is bigger than that? Until next, next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.